All right. Well, thank you for uh, for joining me again. I appreciate your patience and letting me get all these videos up. Uh, the first one I'll put up is nerves, um, and really just I mean, nerves obviously get very complicated. But really, what we're kind of asked to understand is just uh, how these ions essentially move across a membrane and really generate an action potential or create a potential difference in charge that allows an electrical impulse to move down a nerve. So I think it really helps to kind of have a sense of perspective on what's going on here. And this is all really based on just taking little voltmeters here, sticking one little electrode inside the cell, inside the cytoplasm, another one over here, it's outside, if you want to think of that as interstitial space, just fluid surrounding the membranes, fluid surrounding the cells, that's fine. And then as you stick an electrode in here, an electrode out here, you get the little needle to wiggle. So if you think about in class, we kind of played around with these guys. I mean, we didn't stick this end into your nerve and this end out of your nerve, but we could, and then you think about something, you move, you get, electri uh, you get electricity to move through your nerves, our little needle would wiggle. Now I like this one because this range here is the same range we looked at uh, with a nerve. It really would go through about negative 30 or so here, and then it could bounce up uh, over here to like maybe negative positive 70 or so. But yeah, this little needle would wiggle in this range um, if you were to stick one electrode inside cytoplasm of the nerve and one electrode outside cytoplasm of the nerve. Um, and now where this ion exchange really occurs, it's at these called nodes. Uh, I think Dr. Ranvier, Ranvier, French guy. So a node of Ranvier right there. This little space that's not insulated by myelin. So, you know, maybe a better drawing here is, um, so there's electrical impulses that travel down this nerve, and that's really just due to ions being exchanged here, like little currents generated, ions exchange here, little current generated, ion exchange here, little current, gener little current generated. Um, Okay, so remember where this ion exchange occurs is at a node. Here's maybe a better look at nodes. You can see some of them kind of here, if you see my cursor, there's a space where there's no myelin. That's a node. Here's a space here where there's no myelin. So that's where the membrane's really exposed. That's where those sodium and potassium gates or channels are really kind of located. All right, so... Um, all right, so we can stick one electrode inside the cytoplasm one electrode outside the cytoplasm and our little voltmeter starts to wiggle, um, especially as the charged particles come and go um, inside the cytoplasm and then out into the extracellular fluid. So really what we're asked to kind of look at is what would happen to this little needle as you thought about something or as an electrical impulse moved down your nerve. Um, now it's real important to recognize that all of this came from just really studying uh, these little round worms, these little slimy worms that live in the soil. We use those for all kinds of biology experiments. Um, you know, we've sequenced the entire genome of the C. elegans, 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 uh, I say elegans, elegans. Um, but their nerve tissue really functions very similar to ours. It has the same voltage range generated in action potential. So, so really the simplest nerve tissue we find in animals um, still functions with these same gates, these same channels, these same voltage ranges occur. Um, so okay, if we stick an electrode in, our needle would wiggle. We get a graph that looks like this over time. Now the time, this is like milliseconds. So it's, you know, needle wiggles. Like, okay, think about something. It's so fast. So this is a very, very short second of time. But the way to think about it, once again, is that these action potentials occurs there. And then that would actually trigger these gates to open. Occurs there. Occurs there. Occurs there. Occurs there. So at all these nodes is really where we get this ion exchange. And the way to remember this, the way to, obviously, it's kind of an easy pattern to look at. Uh, but I guess we're kind of asked to understand what's occurring at like spot one, spot two, spot three, at these different spots as the voltage changes. And it's really easy to remember if you just have this starting drawing here, so this start spot. Um, so the way I always think of it is, okay, if I'm starting, you really are, your nerve potential or action potential begins, so here at one, uh, there's a higher concentration of potassium salts inside. Um, 
and there's a higher concentration of sodium salts on the outside. So this is extracellular fluid. Uh, this is cytosol, cytoplasm, and this is a node. Um, and there's these channels that cut, that kind of go through those membranes in the node. Now those channels can be closed. Those channels are made of proteins. Uh, really, ATP can denature those proteins as it interacts with it. That denaturing of those protein channels can cause these ions to move one way or the other. Now, they're going to go with osmosis. I mean, they're just going to flow. Is that really the charge gradient? And they're going to flow so that the charge tries to balance out. Um, so, let's think here. So, this resting potential, in other words, you stick an electrode in the nerve, it starts around negative 70, the needle just kind of wiggles one way. Um, so we start there around negative 70. Um, now, if you think about, okay, how are we going to increase the charge inside the cell? Looking at the graph, the charge is going to climb. So as that charge climbs, what does that mean? Well, that must mean that the positives are coming in. Because the whole thing, and maybe I, I mean to remind you of this, the way we define it's kind of arbitrary. The way we define it comes back to the little electrode that was in the cytoplasm minus the charge of the ions of the stuff outside. So, so this graph, if you look at the charge climbing, that really means your inside charge was climbing. Also could mean your outside charge was declining. All right, so, so if you think of how potential is defined on a cell, it's really it's different than potential in a battery or, or potential in a lot. Of, anyway, so yeah, for a nerve cell, inside minus outside. So if it's going up, inside charge going up. All right. um, to get the inside charge to go up, that must mean sodium enters. To, and for sodium to enter, sodium channels are open. Sodium ions go in, charge goes up. Now, what's confusing, if, if you kind of read through the descriptions of this, it says it's depolarizing. I'm like, well, why is it depolarizing? If charged stuff is more charged stuff's moving in, why is it depolarizing? Well, depolarizing just means it approaches zero. So the balance of in and out approaches zero, even though there's more positives coming in. It actually goes a little past to zero, up to 30 millivolts. Um, so let's look at what goes on when it gets up to the peak there. Well, at the peak, uh, right around 30 millivolts, um, you're, that's it's just kind of that charge balance starts to change. The cell adjusts to that, um, and the potassium channels start to open. But really, I look at the graph. The charge starts to go down. Let's see my cursor here. The charge goes down. That must mean the outside charge is going up. Um, so if the charge goes down, potassium, which was a high concentration of at the beginning, starts to leave. Um, so it gets back to zero. It starts to repolarize itself, kind of go farther and farther back to zero. Um, it actually overshoots that uh, favored resting potential a little bit. So this overshoot is really important because that um, when that happens, that your nerves just they don't like that voltage, they don't function that, they don't respond to stimuli when they've overshot that voltage. Um, so really your job of those gates, those sodium and potassium, is to, is to maintain the resting potential. That's really what they're doing. So even if you're not using that part of your brain or using that motor nerve or sensing, I mean, even if that nerve is like, I guess, not active or not having an action potential go into it or move along it, I should move through it, um, the nerve is still having to do, to, the ATP is still having to work, it's still having to, to, to move these eyes, and a lot of that is to get yourself back up, that is the whole key right there, getting yourself back up to that resting potential, that's everything, that is so critical, so important um, to make the nerve really function properly. So. Uh, yeah, here you can see again, this is this little piece here getting itself back up. And then the thing is, I mean, there's other ion channels and nerves. There's like chloride ion channels. I think there's magnesium ion channels and some. But um, so there's other salty other ions moving through. So to maintain that, 
And it's not perfect. Stuff leaks through. Stuff leak kind of can get through the sides. And, I don't know, it's just, so to really try to maintain about a negative 70 millivolt resting potential, the pumps are always having to kind of force these ions across the membrane, denature it so that they're not just freely flowing to reach a charge gradient. Um, so that takes energy, that takes ATP, but that's what keeps you alive. Keeping your nerves ready to fire, keeping your nerves ready to go, keeping your nerves ready to respond to stimuli is all about the ATP maintaining that, that balance of charge. And it, when you say pumping, that's active transport. It's just phosphorylating those protein membranes, or those protein, phosphorylating the protein channels in the membrane that allow these ions to move through. Because remember, highly charged, highly polar, they don't just diffuse through, they need channels to go through the membrane. Um, okay, so yeah, that's an action potential, and that is the role of ATP um, in terms of maintaining resting potential. Um, now, really what I think is the most fascinating part of all of this is, okay, you get electricity moving down a nerve. How can it start to trigger all of these chemicals, all these neurotransmitters, all these hormones? How can it start to trigger them to get out into the synapse? Um, but yeah, electricity can move down here, gets to the end. Or, I don't know. Um, but then, yes, lots of different nerve tissue, endocrine, or, yeah, if you think of our study of the brain, there can be a lot of different chemicals in there. I've asked you guys to read a little bit about things like serotonin or melatonin or dopamine or even adrenaline. Adrenaline not necessarily stored at the end of a nerve, but it can get into that synapse and start to affect those signals as well. So that's kind of what we'll look at. But really, a lot of these chemicals that affect the synapse, a lot of those drugs, a lot of those medicines, especially ones that affect pain sensation are made by plants. And so I think when we start looking at plants, we'll take a look at a lot of the molecules they produce, how they produce them briefly, and then how they start to interact or affect our synapse. Now, the other place we kind of looked at a synapse is, that, well, what if this is a motor nerve? Is this a nerve that makes you move? what kinds of junk and stuff is getting out in this synapse here to really trigger a muscle fiber to, to, to twitch. And so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of look at that. How can this action potential interact? This would be like sarcolemma of, an, of a muscle fiber. Uh, how can it start to push out stuff there that can cause your muscle fibers to move and twitch and contract? Thanks so much. Those nerves.